Some say you can never have too much of a good thing. But this old adage got me thinking about how true or untrue it might be when applied in the off-road world. The question that kept coming up is simply, what is too much? I mean, just because you have excessive travel or horsepower doesn't necessarily mean you have to use all of it. Of course, this brings us to the question of self-control. Could it be argued that you only really have too much of something if you're unable to control yourself from using all of it? Is Polaris's 2023 Razor Pro R too much for any mere mortal to handle? Let's answer that question right now, and let's start by talking about what makes this razor so impressive. And this is it, Polaris's 2023 Razor Pro R the new benchmark for power in the side-by-side -side industry. Let's start by talking about this engine. It is two liters, four cylinders, 16 valves. It makes 225 horsepower. That's naturally aspirated horsepower too, and it literally just goes. And when I say goes, I mean, it goes scary fast. From the first time I hit the throttle, I could not believe the acceleration. And, and I mean, I give a lot of credit to these tires, which again, we'll talk about a little later, but the tires get great traction and they need to because this engine makes so much power. 225 horsepower is nothing to, nothing to scoff at. I mean, that is the highest horsepower in the industry right now, but it's naturally aspirated. And that means that it's a bit different than your typical turbo. So, you know, a Can-Am with just over 200 horsepower feels very different than this and this feels stronger. So 225 horsepower creates some special problems when you think about it. How do you get that much power to the ground reliably? The clutches on the Pro-R are physically larger in diameter than any other side-by-side -side in the lineup. The drive belt is the widest, largest drive belt Polaris has ever made, super durable, and they've increased flow into the, the clutch area by like three times to get more flow in there you will notice a few visual things that are different. And the first one is this right here, is this cool looking hood scoop. That is not just for looks, that actually is uh, a clutch cooling intake, but that is how they get more cooling air into the clutches. There's a, one of the pods back here on the side, just like it always is. And then this one um, does clutch cooling. If you look at the side of this vehicle, the engine is so exposed. It's sitting right there out in the open. You can see the entire engine. You can see the front, the back of it. Just had to create some interesting little like deflector shields and things like that to keep some engine components from the elements safe from damage, especially when you've got them exposed out here where the tire is, because these tires spin so hard in the dirt and the rocks, it's, it's unreal. One of the things I really like about this design and one of the things that actually sets it apart from the slingshot version is the four into two into one exhaust. And this is the optimal design for this motor. Polaris made it very clear that if you were gonna design an exhaust system for this vehicle, this is the system that makes the most horsepower. 
I think to top off the power package, to top everything else off, you know, you've got this really cool single exit exhaust here at the back. I think it looks cool. It's integrated in the vehicle really well. It matches its personality as a high performance vehicle. It doesn't sound like any other vehicle in the industry because it's not. It's the only four cylinder side by side in the industry. At idle, I'm not gonna say I love it, but when you step on it, full throttle, powering down the trail, powering around corners, it has, it just sings. It's got a beautiful sound. So you can't really do any justice to the Pro-R without talking about its suspension because this suspension is, to be perfectly honest, it's, it's ridiculous. You have boxed steel A-arms up front, which when you look at them, they are trophy truck level A-arms. I mean, they are huge, fully welded. The welds are beautiful, but you've also got boxed steel trailing arms. And one of the unique features of these trailing arms is the tow link runs through the middle of the trailing arm. And according to Polaris, it is unbelievably strong. According to my own testing so far, it's still here, so therefore it must be strong. 22 and a quarter inches travel up front and 24 and a half inches out back. The other thing it has is double shear suspension joints at all suspension points. So basically that means the suspension joints where the A-arms bolt on and things like that have two plates of steel instead of just one, considerably more durable. It has an 8.4 inch longer wheelbase than the turbo are. The stiffness of the chassis and the extra length, and obviously it being 74 inches wide, creates a platform that is unbelievably stable in the corners. It's, it gives you more confidence than anything I've ever driven powering through really, really tight corners that are high traction. Uh, back here, you've got probably some of the largest radius rods anyone has ever seen in this industry, ridiculously large. They're arched as well on the bottom side, so that gives you more clearance. And then of course, you've got your shock package. Now this model is not Dynamics DV full jam. This is the midline model. It has Walker Evans needle shocks, front and rear. They're 2.5s up front and 3 and 3.0s in the back. In terms of how does the suspension work? Well, again, I come back to Dynamics. Dynamics allows you to ride with a vehicle set up soft, but still do big bump without noticing it. So you get that incredible small bump compliance, but you still get that bottoming resistance. Now, these are needle shocks, so they do have extra bottoming resistance. You will bottom, even on smaller jumps, you're, you're gonna use all your travel. So I had to set it up stiffer than I would want for just fire road, high speed running, so that it wouldn't bottom when I hit jumps. And that to me is, probably pretty typical. I think if I had high and low speed compression, I could tune that better. But with the single compression adjuster, that's the sacrifice you're gonna have to make. If you're gonna spend this much money, just spend the extra and get the Dynamics version. Overall, incredible suspension design, unbelievably strong, unbelievably capable. On all four corners of the Pro R, first of all, you've got five lug unitized hubs. Stronger, more durable, just generally able to take abuse far more. The wheels themselves being five lug, it's a better attachment point to the hub. Something to consider uh, is the three piston caliper front brakes. Now, <laughs> these brakes are unreal, incredibly precise. When you step on the brakes, this sucker stops. It cools a little bit better. It doesn't heat up quite as much because you've got more pad surface. Of course, part of the reason you need such good braking is that you've got a crazy set of wheels and tires on this thing. These Maxxis Rampage Fury tires, 32 by 10 with a 15 inch rim. These are massive tires and I'm not gonna lie, they are really heavy, eight ply tires. You can see how square the lugs are on the outside. It provides unbelievable outside grip. It bites so hard that the front inside wheel comes way up off the ground while you're cornering. The roll cage and chassis of the Pro R are the strongest, most durable, stiffest Polaris has ever built for any of their vehicles. And in turn, they become the safest. This roll cage is fully welded and is made of two inch tubing. So it's extremely tough. It has tapered joints where it meets the chassis. It's an extremely strong mating point that, that again is super durable, but also if you ever were to have an issue with this vehicle, it's gonna stay in one piece. You got your six point harnesses. They are retractable, so that's nice. You've got uh, storage, which is great up here and up here. You got your tilt and telescoping steering column with your gauge attached, just the way all razors do. And this switch is your um, drive mode switch. This power package comes with three drive modes. It comes with rock, uh, sport, and race. Rock definitely smooths things out a lot. It gives you really precise throttle control. It filters out any of the weird 
shaking your foot might do on the throttle, causing jerking of the vehicle. Sport and race, to me, I didn't feel a ton of difference. Race was more abrupt for sure, but not by a lot. This model comes with the um, entry-level Rockford Fosgate system, which is still a really good sound system. Basically, it's got your speakers integrated in the dash here with your tweeters up underneath the roll bar mount. And uh, obviously your audio is all integrated, integrated into your ride command display here, which is a full functioning ride command display. It does all the things ride command does, mapping and everything. There's no downgrade there. You know, your seats are adjustable. This one is, I believe, two-way adjustable forward and back and tilt. The driver's seat is actually four-way adjustable. It has 16 inches of ground clearance, which is fantastic. It is eight and a half inches longer than the Turbo R. It has a 104 and a half inch wheelbase. So that is an extremely long two seat wheelbase. Now I talked earlier about how this vehicle is heavier um, than the Turbo R, certainly heavier than other Razors. It is 2,144 pounds dry. That is the claim dry weight of the vehicle. I did the math on it because I was curious about power to weight ratio. Does that extra 200 pounds sort of cancel out the 225 horsepower? It's basically, what is it, 44 horsepower more than the turbo version. And the answer to that question, it actually has a 1.3 pound per horsepower advantage over the turbo R. Its power to weight ratio is better. All of that said, power to weight ratio is just one calculation of performance. What matters most to me is seat of the pants feel. And the seat of the pants feel on this vehicle is off the charts, literally off the charts. I talked in the beginning about excess. Too much is only too much if you don't have enough self-control. It's not too much because it is controllable. You can drive it slow and smooth. You can drive it fast and aggressive. You don't have to use all 225 horsepower all the time. For a person who loves horsepower, for a person who loves to go fast, this thing is darn near perfect. It does everything I wanted it to do. I had high expectations and every one of them was exceeded. It's hard to get me out of the driver's seat. I just want to keep going. And if I want to keep riding it when I've got a whole fleet of other vehicles that I can ride every day, I think that says a lot.